let's go ahead and get started. I do want to remind everyone that we are recording this session and that it should be available within the next couple of weeks on the Unicon U Portal website. Um, as I'd mentioned, uh, my name is Stephen English. I'm the project manager for U Portal here at Unicon, and I welcome everyone to our quarter three briefing. Um, let's go ahead and put some faces to the names that um, will be moderating the call today and those that are on the U Portal team. As I'd mentioned, my name is Stephen English. Um, we have Drew Wills that most of you already know. Um, we've got Benito Gonzalez. Um, we've got Chris Beach. He's our newest member to the U Portal team. He actually is splitting time between Aquella, which is a, a content management system that is in the process of becoming open sourced and uh, available to the public. Um, and he's split again, splitting his time between U Portal and Aquella. And then we have Christian Murphy, our uh, UI guy extraordinaire, and he also put our deck together for today. Um, good guy, lots of creativity up in that brain, and uh, he's always a great value to our U Portal team. All right, so let's look at the agenda real quick. Um, quarter three briefing is all about U-Portal 5. Um, we'll talk about sustaining engineering efforts that went into the release of U-Portal 5. Um, Drew will talk about the new build process with U-Portal 5, the new configuration process, and then our community spotlight for this quarter is University of California, Riverside. Um, unfortunately, they're not gonna be able to make it to the presentation today or to the briefing. So Drew's gonna sit in with them because he's the one that implemented their U Portal uh, 5 install. As a matter of actually just a couple of weeks ago. So he's very well versed in new features and um, different configurations that UCR implemented for their U Portal 5 install. Um, so uh, look forward to hearing that. All right, so next slide. All right, perfect. So without further ado, I'll allow the team to take it away. Hi folks, this is Christian Murphy here. Um, let's talk about what efforts we did in the quarter three for sustaining engineering. Um, this has been a really busy quarter. We've managed to get 10 milestone release out um, for U-Portal 5, uh, milestone two through the RC1. Um, we've gotten 34 tickets um, requested by the community resolved. Um, we've merged in about 159 floor requests. And to do all this, we've used about um, 249 hours of sustaining engineering hours. Uh, so a big thanks to all of our sustaining engineering um, customers. Um, your support has made this amazing quarter possible. Let's jump um, up into some of the exciting breaking news coming in for U Portal 5. Drew, take it away. Yeah, happy to. Uh... So this is Drew Wills. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's very good to see uh, all the connections and everyone participating in this call. Uh, Christian, could you hit the next slide, and then I'm going to possibly ask you for something. Yeah, could would you possibly uh, stop presenting and then represent? I have some late-breaking changes to the deck. Absolutely. We uh, cut the uh, point zero. Uh, this, the, the full release notes, and they are pretty full, I think they are three or four screens. The full release notes are on uh, the GitHub release page. Uh, I've taken a, a screen capture of that here, and I put the full URL at the bottom. Uh, I encourage you to look through them. Uh, there's a lot of important information there, as well as, uh, you know, recognition of folks who contributed and uh, you know, notes for upgraders and all kinds of important things. Uh, yeah, go ahead, next slide if you would. Uh, <laughs> I think the way we've got this chiveled up, I, I think this is gonna be Benito next, right? Yeah, good morning. Can you guys yeah. hear me? Yeah, hear you well, man. All right, cool. Hey, so I'm gonna cover security slide. Um, I'm going to mention, or I'm going to cover the first two bullet points together because uh, they're closely uh, tied together. Um, a few clients have run automated security tools and found that uPortal is vulnerable to CSRF. Um, so I'm going to describe that first and then talk about cores. 
Uh, so Cross-site request forgery is a CSRF. It's an attack that forges, uh, forces an end user to execute unwanted actions uh, on a web application in which they're currently authenticated. Um, they specifically target uh, state changing requests. Um, there's no theft of data, uh, but it does uh, allow modification um, because the user has already authenticated. The example being tossed around uh, in the literature is a bank transaction where uh, the attacker cannot see what's going on on the web page, but they can have a user inadvertently transfer funds from their account to um, a, a attacker's account or a target account. Um, this has a limited impact in uPortal. Uh, our users don't really have a lot of ability to uh, modify things outside of their layout. It's really more uh, susceptible um, to admins where they can configure things, modify portlets, add and remove things. So it, it would have to be a very, very targeted attack um, to, to do anything noteworthy. Still, this is something that's popped up on the radar, so we, we thought we'd address it. So the first thing is, is cores. Cores is cross-origin resource sharing. It's kind of the ability to grab fonts from another site. So by default, uh, browsers support this cores controls. And they do allow many things, but they, they um, block Ajax requests. Still, that's not quite good enough. Um, <clears throat> uh, our team was able to craft a form request that went ahead and did a post to uPortal, uh, just something crafted uh, from scratch that just required uh, a login uh, previously to firing off that form, then it was able to make a post request. So by implementing a, a chorus filter, we're able to block those yeah. types of requests. Oh, I got it, I got it. What was that? Um, so that will address the uh, automated tools that are, are finding issues with uPortal uh, with CRS vulnerabilities. So what if you want to actually allow some cross-origin resources uh, just from a server that you, that's well known? So we've surfaced the course configuration into properties files. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on in this presentation. And to see what can actually be configured, we've uh, documented all the uh, details in uh, security documentation in the Git repo. So the second thing we're uh, talking about here is CSRF tokens. Uh, CS, CSRF tokens are uh, another second layer of, of CRSF attacks. Uh, the way it works is tokens are generated and added to the user session and then sent um, in, in response to page requests. Uh, whenever a action request is submitted uh, by the user, uh, these tokens are sent back and uh, uPortal will now check this against what's stored in the session, preventing just random posts. So between these two, we should have the CR CSRF vulnerability well covered. Uh, moving on to Spring 4, the uh, upgrade addresses um, a crucial U portal dependency on Spring 3. It was end of life on December 31st, 2016. So by performing this upgrade, we've just allowed ourselves to continue picking up security patches. Uh, that's why it's listed here. Uh, Spring 4 is, is the current release. Um, but it's worth noting that the impact of being able to use the latest Spring technology and best practices is, is really the crucial advantage of bringing Spring 4 um, into uPortal. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, we've also upgraded dependencies as we discover security and vulnerabilities. I'd like to thank Christian Murphy for finding a service called Versioni. Um, this was a service that monitored get repos, looked at their dependencies, and would check against reported security vulnerabilities. We discovered things such as uh, JGroups vulnerability with this tool and were able to patch JGroups among other things. This has been really kind of a boon. Um, we feel more confident knowing that something is reviewing our dependencies and letting us know when there's uh, reported security vulnerabilities. 
unfortunately, this service will be discontinued soon. Um, so we'll, we'll have to find something else, but at least uh, we've used it for a short period of time and hopefully we can find a replacement for it. Next slide. Howdy folks, um, Christian again. Um, so another effort we've been doing a lot of work in this quarter is um, Lightning U Portal Up. Um, what we've been focusing on is looking for um, unreachable and unused code that is kind of left around from U Portal 4.3 that we don't need anymore. Um, Drew has been really pushing this effort forward a lot, um, doing a technique called tree shaking to go through the code base and kind of find um, little pieces of dead code left around and letting us um, sweep those out of the way and clean up the code base. Um, and this quarter alone, we've cleared out about 20,000 lines of dead code. And going into U Portal 5, um, I believe from U Portal 4, we've removed over 100,000 lines of code um, that are no longer needed. Um, and the really cool part about this is the way that we've done it is we haven't necessarily removed any features. We've just removed dead aspects of the code. So the code still does what it did before. Um, it just has less weight and less um, complexity while doing it. Um, another thing which started in quarter three and will hopefully wrap up in one of the coming quarters is we've started some work on getting a Docker image put together. Um, a minimal Docker image is a way of deploying uPortal. And um, what we've been focusing on is building a Docker image so that you can deploy it using just a small, um, about 500 megabyte um, image that you can put out onto a server and you will have a fully functional uPortal instance running. Um, so we're excited about that in the future and you'll hear some more updates about that in coming um, briefings. Hey, Christian, before we move forward, we have a question in the chat room. It might be one for Benito. How are the REST APIs secured in uPortal 5? Does the team want to answer that now? So, Steve and I typed a reply. Uh, Benito might have some insightful stuff to add, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to hit them as they come up. Perfect. Oh, wow. Did I, you reply to the group or just to No, Bruce? somehow I... I did not. Thank <laughs> you for catching that. <laughs> there we go. The uh, this UI for chat is uh, it's a trap. All right. Any further elaboration needed there? Are you good with that, Bruce? It, it's up to Bruce. I'm uh, I'm happy to elaborate further, uh, either here or subsequently. Bruce, that's great. Thanks. Appreciate that. All right. And next, um, we're going to be chatting about how we've made um, uPortal 5 an easier system to build. And I'll be handing it off to Drew. Uh, yeah, uPortal 5 certainly is easier to build. Uh, and uh, what we mean by that is nuance. There are a lot of layers to this. Um, for starters, we replaced uh, the, so uPortal, previous to uPortal 5, uh, uPortal 3 and 4 uh, had a hybrid uh, Ant and Maven uh, build system. Uh, developers or administrators would primarily interact with Ant. Uh, Ant under the hood would uh, invoke Maven and together uh, the, those two tools provided, um, you know, were the basis of uPortal's build system. Uh, they are now both gone. Uh, they are replaced with, uh, with a newer uh, build tool called Gradle. Uh, and uh, I should mention as well that in uPortal 3 and 4, you were, as, a, as someone working with uPortal, you were obligated to install both Ant and Maven, you were obligated to install two build tools. Uh, the number that you're obligated to install with uPortal 5 is zero because Gradle uh, is, is, the way we're using Gradle, we have included a Gradle wrapper with the project itself. So the, uh, it, you know, a lightweight version of the build tool is baked into the project repository 
into the project sources itself. So you, you simply need to clone the uPortal 5 repo, the one you're going to work with, uh, and you already have the build tool. So it's very quick to set up. What's on the next slide? Is it somebody else or yeah, it's you, isn't it? All right, uh, there's a lot more to say. Uh, for one thing, uh, again, in previous versions of uPortal, uh, as an adopter of uPortal, as a uPortal developer, you are obligated to take uh, and compile, package, deploy uh, the entire universe of uPortal technology. Uh, that is no longer uh, no longer the case. Uh, we now have a module called uPortal Start, and as an as an adopter, as an implementer of uPortal, uPortal Start is the thing that you want to work with. the The core Java sources under the hood uPortal technology that's all still in the main uPortal repo, but that is something that the framework developers, including including me, including Christian and Benito, including several of you, the main framework developers will, uh, you know, contribute to that repository, uh, will make progress on that repository, uh, and release uh, builds or, or versions of that repository. And as a, a uPortal implementer or administrator or maybe, a, you know, a, a UI developer, a skinner, you merely have to point to a version of uPortal that you want to use in, in your portal. You no longer need to build uh, the entire universe of uPortal technology. Uh, the build times uh, in uPortal Start are lightning fast. Uh, most things can be done with, uh, you know, on the order of most targeted sort of surgical things can be done on the order of 10 seconds. Uh, you also have a lot more control, a lot more precision in the things you can do. Many of you will remember that in uPortal 4 and in uPortal 3, it was not uh, very easy. It was largely not possible to deploy one portlet at a time uh, from the bundled portlets. Uh, that is uh, no longer the case. It is um, uh, entirely easy. It, it is entirely possible uh, and straightforward to deploy a single module uh, to Tomcat uh, from uPortal Start, whether it's uPortal itself or any of the bundled uh, portlet applications. Uh, I think that you can go on and I'll read this Matt, uh, message. Uh, Andrew Petro makes a good point. Uh, you are more than encouraged to participate in the development of the core uPortal technology. As a matter of fact, we, you know, essentially rely on you. Uh, we, you know, we rely on each other in the community, uh, just as always, to do that development. Uh, please do participate, but the separation makes it a lot easier to recognize which hat you're wearing at any given time. Am I Am I wearing my, uh, you know, my U, my U uh, portal implementation developer hat, or am I wearing my U portal framework uh, contributor hat? Uh, all right. So we have some information about some of the uh, important Gradle tasks included with U portal Start. Uh, this is a very high level. There's a much longer list. Uh, you can see the whole list by running uh, Gradle tasks. You know, uh, dot uh, slash Gradle W space tasks will give you a complete list with descriptions. Uh, but the uPortal Start Gradle based build system has the ability to start and stop Tomcat. It has the ability to, uh, more importantly than that, it has the ability to uh, download, uh, install, and configure a proper version of Tomcat for you. It knows all about how to do that. Uh, no longer necessary is um, each developer going into Catalina uh, properties and setting the shared loader property. No longer is it necessary for every uh, portal developer to go into um, you know server.xml and make adjustments to go into context.xml and set the session cookie path equal to slash 
Uh, we have the, the new uPortal start build system handles all of those kind of arcane details that details that are a lot to throw at someone who is fresh uh, to uPortal, you know, on their sort of first day of uPortal interaction. Uh, uPortal start using Gradle tasks also has the ability to start and stop the embedded hypersonic database, which uh, just as previous, we include with uPortal for uh, developer deployments, you know, for local development deployments. Uh, uPortal start includes a full complement of import export tasks. Uh, they have been renamed uh, data init, data import, data export, data delete. Uh, and uh, as I kind of mentioned, with any any module, and in uPortal Start, uPortal itself is a bundled module. It works uh, just like all the bundled portlets and the resource server and the bundled CAS. Everything is a bundled module, and with any bundled module, you have the ability to uh, to clean it uh, individually, to install it, to deploy it to Tomcat individually. Uh, next. Uh, is this still me? All right. Apparently, someone uh, someone close to the matter uh, made a, a proclamation that this is big, so you have to pay pay attention. Uh, I kind of alluded to this already. Uh, Christian Murphy was kind enough to set up this sort of uh, visual representation of the of the things that make up U, U Portal Five. Um, you know the different sort of elements of uPortal 5. Way on the left in blue, uh, you have uPortal itself. Uh, this is essentially a Git repository. It, it, it completely is a Git repository. It is the same Git repository that we all know and love. The main uPortal repository, uh, you know, is still, for the present, it's still in the same place. Uh, it has, it contains all the core uPortal uh, technology, uh, Java technology primarily, uh, you know, a little bit of JavaScript, even some XSLT still. Uh, but that technology is general. Uh, none of it is specific to an adoption. There's nothing that needs to be done to uPortal. Uh, the uPortal repository, the uPortal jar files, and the WAR file that gets built from the main uPortal repository. There's nothing that needs to be done to it that's implement, implementation specific. Uh, as framework developers, we work on uPortal, you know, we advance it, we add features, we fix bugs, we improve performance, we improve security, uh, we improve uh, accessibility. Uh, we all work on it together, and periodically, uh, the community of uPortal developers releases uh, you know, version updates, patch versions in the future, new new minor versions, uh, and those go to Maven Central. And the the copies of that technology that you will use in your portal uh, have been built by the community, and they come from Maven Central. No longer is it necessary to build all that Java code locally. Uh, as adopters of uPortal, we work with this thing in the middle called uPortal Start. Uh, and it has bundled modules. One of those bundled modules is uPortal, the thing I just talked about the, that comes from Maven Central. Uh, many of the other bundled mo modules will also come from Maven Central. Uh, you may have some, some custom local, you know, portlet modules or in the future potentially soffit modules. But you, uPortal Start knows how to uh, uh, gather the modules that you choose for your portal and uh, deploy them to Tomcat appropriately. uPortal Start also allows you to manage the things that make uPortal your portal, uh, your data, your configuration, your skin. And uPortal Start includes a suite, uh, some of which I've been talking about, a suite of uh, CLI tools that allow you to manage those things and also to manage your 
uh, deployments and assembling your portal altogether. Lastly, there is this green square on the right. Uh, this is a very important concept. Uh, for uPortal 5, we've in introduced this notion of the portal home directory. The uh, portal home directory, it's, you know, it's a file system directory uh, on, the, on the disk, with, uh, you know, on the same machine as your deployment, uh, and it contains properties files. And those properties files uh, are sourced by the running uPortal instance. They're also sourced by all the CLI tools, by the way. Uh, and they are sourced in such a way that things you define there override uh, the same properties that have been set uh, at an earlier stage, su such as inside your portal itself. So uh, the middle area, your portal start, allows you to manage institution specific. Uh, uPortal choices. The green box on the right, Portal Home, allow, gives you complete control over deployment-specific choices. So you no longer need to build uPortal for dev and build separately for test and build separately for production because there are, there are no environment-specific configuration choices that are baked into, uh, at least not in a permanent way baked into the U portal that goes into Tomcat. You have every opportunity to tune or control uh, the deployment outside of the build, packaging, and deployment process uh, that, you know, that is provided by U portal. Uh, can we get the next slide? Uh, is this still me or is this other folks? Yeah. Oh, Benito, excellent. Hey, uh, so kind of Drew uh, covered most of the things uh, that, that are, are uh, in this slide, um, but to, to drill, drill down into some details, uh, again, uPortal Start is a repository that manages per institution configuration, and this is in contrast to the per cluster configuration. So what are some of the things that really go into uPortal Start? Uh, overlays? Uh, skins and data files, uh, as you saw in, in the uh, diagram on the other slide. Um, other things that go into uPortal Star would be uh, DB drivers. Um, most in institutions will use the same database, whether it's dev, test, or production. So uh, database drivers are, are the dependencies that are excellent candidate to be put in uPortal Star. Uh, also, bean customization is captured in the overrides context. Uh, most commonly uh, configured beans would be things like your attribute sources, such as LDAP, not the details of how to log in, connect, user password, but what attributes will be pulled back from LDAP. Um, also, default properties could also be captured in uPortal Start, such as uh, possible core setting or a myriad of other things, um, but not passwords, of course. Uh, and ePortal 5's approach to externalize things, to pull configuration out of XML um, and allow these external property files to exist in ePortal Home is really something we've focused on. So those are the places where you put URLs to CAST, SHIB, LDAP, and database along with credentials. Um, and as we find configuration that should be cluster specific, we will work uh, to surface them as property values such that you can uh, define them in, in uPortal Home. That's kind of really the focus and the takeaway for, from this slide. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is faster build times. Really when you're not having to compile all the source, you're able to pull things down as binary is already pre-compiled and you're just tweaking or adding some uh, customizations on top of that. Uh, things build out really, really fast. Uh, so one of the last things I'll, I'll touch on here is, is also if you create a custom Java class, it, it, it would go in the uPortal start and be built out as part of uh, an overlay module. So I, I think that's it for this uh, slide. Next. All right. Thanks, Benito. Um, so another thing we want to let you guys know about is uPortal developer dates are coming up. Um, it's going to be December 4th through the 7th. It is generously being hosted by University of Wisconsin-Madison. 
Um, admission is free. You just have to get out there and get a hotel room to be able to stay while you're out there. Um, we've included a link out to the form to register and has some of the um, agenda and other information about this. Um, we're really hoping to see folks out there at the developer days. Drew, can you give us an update on how many people have actually signed up to attend? Uh, I can. I definitely can give you an update. Uh, it may be an out-of-date update. Uh, I, my understanding is in the neighborhood of 20. I think Jim Helwig is on the call. He may have a uh, more up-to-date count. That's good. Sounds like it's going to be a really good turnout. Uh, I think 20 is a fantastic turnout, to be honest. I think we'll get a lot of good work done. Uh, let's see if anyone posts uh, in the chat. We have 13 people officially registered, um, but there had been around 20 that had indicated interest. So if you are planning on going, make sure you register. Uh, thank you, Jim. And um, I don't believe we have publicized uh, this event very much in the last couple weeks. We should probably up our game and make more noise uh, while there's still time. But I guess this is part of that. Uh, before we move on, uh, the, uh, I really like this picture. Uh, there may be snow at uh, UW-Madison, but I really like that there's some goofball with uh, shorts and a t-shirt in this line uh, towards the back. All That's right. a great observation. <laughs> it's always one. Uh, all right, this is Drew. We're going to take a look at, so not only is there uh, new, as of yesterday, for you, the uPortal community, a, a uPortal 5. Uh, not only is there a uPortal 5, uh, but we can also tell you that there is a uPortal 5 uh, deployment in production as of Monday. Uh, and that is the, uh, you know, the newest member of this community, the University of California, Riverside. Uh, uh, you know, they brought students into their portal on Monday, and their portal is based on uPortal 5. Uh, the, uh, I, Unicon and I pitched in uh, with the UCR implementation of uPortal, and uh, Brandon Ayers uh, and our, our group uh, worked on this content. Unfortunately, Brandon couldn't join us this morning, so uh, knowing a fair amount about this work, I offered to uh, cover this content anyway, because I think it's really cool. Uh, so a uh, little bit about UC Riverside. Uh, they're in the UC system. Uh, here you can see a list of other schools in the UC system. Uh, they're located in Southern California, not terribly distant from LA. Uh, 2,200 students, uh, 900 faculty. Go ahead. Uh, I'm actually kind of glad that I get to cover this slide uh, instead of Brandon because I think this is remarkable. When I saw how uh, he put this together, I, um, it, you know, I thought, wow, that's that's really interesting. Uh, you know, previous to uPortal 5 within Unicon, we used to have these discussions about a lower limit on implementation time for uPortal, uh, on how quickly, just how quickly it was humanly possible to implement uPortal. Uh, we know that, you know, we know that depending on your choices, it could be done in, uh, you know, a couple hundred hours of work or under. Uh, depending on what you're shooting for. Uh, but just to kind of wrangle all the human choices, uh, all the decisions uh, and provision, all of the, um, you know, the hardware or environments, uh, you know, tools like issue trackers, um, you know, get repositories and so forth, uh, just to manage all the human aspects, we used to kind of to, to wonder aloud if maybe there was a lower limit on implementation time for uPortal of around five months, you know, four to five months. Uh, 
the University of uh, California Riverside uh, portal project came together at a remarkable speed. Uh, from start to production uh, and production users uh, in right around uh, three months. Uh, it, the work was done by two developers on the UCR side and uh, contributions from uh, the Unicon portal team. None of us worked full time on it. I suppose there were weeks that we worked, uh, individual weeks that we worked full time, but uh, all of us had, um, you know, balanced a combination of projects. Uh, I guess we uh, tackled 119 user stories. Uh, UCR used a, an issue tracker that I really, really liked. Uh, this was my first experience with it, but I was blown away by uh, how well it represented uh, the project. It's called Pivotal Tracker. Uh, I enjoyed working with it quite a bit. I hope to work with it again. Uh, 16 and a half thousand users on the first day. That's not bad. Uh, all right, next slide. So we're going to talk about, we're going to cover mostly uh, some of the neatest features, some of the coolest visual things, uh, the, you know, interactive user experience things uh, that Riverside did. Uh, here we have a screen capture of what a typical uh, starting page looks like. Uh, the, you know, in this case, it's what the uh, starting page might look like uh, for a student. Uh, Brandon captured the screenshot, logged in as himself, so he's, uh, you know, you can see his name up at the top. Uh, those of you that have been to uh, Open Aperio have perhaps met Brandon. Uh, you know, he was he was there this year together with Juan Gonzalez, uh, and they were, you know, a big help in, you know, in driving questions and content uh, in the conference. Uh, the, the R web and R space business, that has to do with uh, the, the notion, the fact that the previous uh, UCR portal uh, was split in two. There was one for students and one for staff. Uh, I apologize because I'm not going to remember which one is which. I think R web was staff and R space students, but don't quote me on it. Uh, the new portal is one experience for everyone. Go ahead, Christian. There are four items of new uh, and interesting user experience functionality that we're going to look at, uh, in, you know, in connection with the, the Riverside adoption. Uh, modal notifications, uh, this notion of spotlights, uh, and the integration with the announcements module. Uh, the quick links launcher, and then uh, lastly, improved uh, search results UI. So go ahead. Uh, so UC Riverside are using the standard Aperio notification module. Uh, the, you know, many of you are familiar with it. It's a bundled portlet. It comes with you portal out of the box. Uh, Riverside added, contributed a new uh, strategy, uh, display strategy for notifications uh, called, uh, you know, modal, uh, a modal uh, display strategy. Uh, this is in, in use at UCR. It was developed by UCR. It was contributed to Aperio by UCR. It is available in the most recent builds of notifications. It's available in, in the version of notifications that is bundled with uPortal 5. Uh, the notion at Riverside is that any, any notification that comes through the pipeline with a priority, you know, signaled as priority one with a priority value of one, uh, those notifications get routed instead of to the regular, you know, sort of the traditional notifications display, priority one notifications get router, routed to the modal display strategy, and they appear about like you see over here on the left. Uh, I, in, in passing, I'd also like to mention that several of these modal notifications require some form of acknowledgement or action on the part of the user. Uh, the buttons at the bottom, uh, just like all other notifications, the buttons at the bottom of the modal notifications are completely configurable in terms of what they say and in terms of what they do. 
some notifications have multiple buttons. Uh, different notifications have different buttons. One of the UCR notifications has an HTML form embedded in it. That was really special, let me tell you. Uh, we had to figure out, you know, just exactly how we were going to support that. But we do have, uh, and the notification uh, module now supports the ability to embed an HTML form in the notification and capture uh, the things that, you know, the choices that the user makes in the HTML form. UCR's form has uh, a couple of, of radio buttons. Uh, go ahead. Uh, next item, spotlights. Uh, for UCR, you, you know, they had a desire to have this sort of very compelling uh, user experience for, um, uh, you know, some news items. Uh, we, you, you can see it there on the left, that's a, a screen capture. It looks inviting to me. I'd like to attend UCR. Looks like fun. Uh, the, it's a bootstrap carousel. It's a very simple bootstrap carousel. And it's in, integrated with the announcements portlet. Uh, there are topics, a couple of them, in the announcements portlet admin that exist for the purpose of filling these spotlights. Uh, these topics, they have different people in charge of creating content, and they have different people in charge of approving the content. I think one is for students, the other one for staff members. Uh, the, uh, those topics uh, come out of the announcements. They're expressed from the announcements module as RSS, and they're consumed as RSS in the carousel. RSS uh, supports uh, the notion of, um, uh, you know, it has an XML element for specifying, uh, you know, a media object, in this case an image. So every uh, item in the RSS feed uh, includes an image, and this uh, carousel, this sort of spotlights UI, uh, is constructed from the RSS feed out of announcements based on the title and the image provided in the RSS feed. The RSS feed also provides a link. You can see this learn more, um, you know, text over there on the right. That's a hyperlink. You click on that and you'll go into the individual announcement itself in the portal. Let's see. Uh, yep, next slide, go ahead. All Drew, right. do, you, uh, do you want to answer Bruce's question? How do modal notifications get cleared? Where are the actual notifications stored? Uh, so modal notifications may be cleared in a number of ways. Uh, and actually the, the copy, the text content inside the notification actually may be uh, stored in a number of ways. The Typically, they get cleared by snoozing them. Uh, the notifications module out of Aperio has, has this notion of, uh, of snooze or hide, uh, and it's on a timer. In some cases with UCR, uh, the modal notification is uh, snoozed for a year, a period of a year. In, uh, in some cases, the modal notification is snoozed for a much shorter period and simultaneously, a message is sent to another system on campus indicating the user's acknowledgement or the user's choice. And it's up to the other system on campus to clear the notification. And if the other system on campus does clear the notification within the, the, the short window, within the period, you know, maybe it's an hour, uh, then it won't reappear. Uh, no worries, Jim. Uh, good to see you as always. Uh, so uh, the most notifications, uh, they represent information from other systems. Uh, the notification module in Aperio gives you the opportunity to integrate with the other system, not only to pull the notification, but also to pass on uh, the user's acknowledgement or selection or uh, you know, in, in whatever way the user's completion of the notification. Yeah, go ahead. 
All right, uh, next item at UCR, uh, some of you may recognize this from the way that, that Google handles, uh, uh, you, you know, providing sort of universal access to all their suite of uh, applications. Uh, this, um, I don't even know what to call this, this nine boxes thing at the top. It's, uh, you know, it's not a hamburger, that's something else. Uh, does this thing have a name, Christian? Hot launcher usually. Uh, the, the app launcher that works. That's what um, UCR are using it for. Uh, there's an app launcher icon at the top of the page. Uh, if you click it, it expands to give you uh, an experience like you can see in the screen capture. Uh, within this sort of expandable area or expandable drawer, there is uh, a, a selection of campus applications at UCR, each one with a title and an icon, you know, a colorful icon. Uh, so this gives users of the UCR portal quick access to another, a number of other systems on campus. Uh, and this was uh, pleasant and uh, easy and quick uh, to implement, I have to say. Go ahead. Uh, lastly, here is another thing that was uh, contributed to Aperio uh, through in the process of uh, building out the UCR portal. Uh, this item was contributed to uPortal itself. This is the uh, search results user interface. When you search using the search box at the top of the page, you can see it in the screen capture right there. Uh, if you just type, you're going to get searches, you type results. Those are limited to content in the portal, limited to portlets. But if you hit enter, you get uh, a more extensive list of results. Uh, in this case, we're looking at, uh, you know, people in the UCR community who, um, uh, you know, come back as a search result based on something that was typed in the box at the top. Uh, and the UI for this has been enhanced to contain more information and be uh, more attractive, easier to, uh, you know, review with the human eye. I think that's it for UCR. Uh, Drew, excellent. Drew, there's folks. a couple of questions. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, Drew. I'm going to go look. Oh, waffle menu. That's fair enough word for it. Uh, we haven't contributed the quick launcher or, you know, neither UCR nor myself have pushed that into an Imperio repo, uh, Brandon uh, from OU, but uh, I had been kind of thinking it'd be nice to include it in the portal itself as one of those JSP invoker uh, portlets. It's relatively simple. The whole thing can be implemented in one JSP. Uh, Bruce, I, I'm not immediately aware to what extent search integration with Google is broken uh, in uPortal 5 or uPortal 4 for that matter. Uh, is this something that we could um, you know, look at on the list? I, yeah, I'm not, the Google search appliance integration uh, not working, it's not something that I'm currently tracking. Uh, maybe Benito or someone else is. Uh, no, I'm not aware of it. You know, we're always happy to, you know, to help. Uh, we would certainly like it to work. Drew, Bruce has another question. I see Jonathan's question. Uh, Jonathan tossed out a possible fix. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, we, you know, we need to take a look at that in uh, a community process when we have time. Uh, you know, not live on Zoom. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah, uh, we've sort of reached the end of the content that we organized for this. Uh, let's see. And see when, what are big changes uh, see when using uPortal 5 versus uPortal 4. So in terms of visual changes, honestly, they're not a tremendous number, Bruce. 
Uh, there are some, uh, but they're not, um, you, you know, vast in number. Uh, UPortal 5 was more about, was mostly sort of about uh, re-architecting how uh, developers and admins and implementers uh, work with the portal technology. Uh, the build system was completely thrown out and redone on Gradle. It's vastly uh, faster and more modern, uh, more intuitive, more flexible, more powerful. Also, the way that uPortal uh, deployments are configured was completely, you know, sort of thrown out and redone. Uh, and those were sort of big enough changes for uPortal 5. There are visual changes, uh, you know, relatively medium-sized ones. For one thing, the admin tools tab is now a collection of app launchers. It looks like a mobile dashboard. As an admin, when you access the admin tools, uh, you'll see titles of all the, all the admin tools together with an icon. And you can, you know, click on one of those icons to access each tool. Uh, another visual change is the search UI update that we just covered, contributed by UCR. Another visual change, I believe the bell icon replaces the warning icon uh, for the uh, notification icon portlet. Uh, UCR, you know, just as you are free to do in a responder-based uPortal, UCR has moved the notification icon out of the eyebrow area and into the, the header right uh, region. Uh, the um, you know, the right-hand side of the header. Uh, out of the box, by default, the notification icon appears in the eyebrow region, uh, which in this screenshot is, is yellow. Uh, let's see where we are. Uh, Jonathan asks, how much custom development was done to uPortal 5 out of the box? Uh, oh, and here's an email thread uh, regarding the uh, Google search appliance. I would say, so with UCR, it's a little bit tricky because uPortal uh, 5, uh, you know, the creation of uPortal 5 was in flight at the same time that the UCR implementation was going down. So they were kind of done hand in hand. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, well, I don't know if there's a lot, but there's a potential for gray area. There's potential uh, for, uh, activities that look a little bit like custom uPortal 5 development and look a little bit like uh, simply getting uPortal 5 out the door. Uh, the idea with uPortal 5 is that custom development of the uPortal framework is not required uh, as much as possible, and this has been the case for years and years, as much as possible. Uh, we are um, you know, endeavoring uh, to make it the case that you don't have to change the core uPortal sources in order to do everything you want uh, with uPortal. You are, it's open source. You are, of course, free to do it. Uh, but we would, um, we would be most pleased not to see uh, a majority of adopters of uPortal doing private label uh, uPortal builds of the main uh, repo. Uh, Drew, is uh, uPortal, I'm sorry, is UCR um, cloning uPortal at all and making modifications there? I, I don't believe they are. No, they are not, are not at all. And that's the path we recommend. Uh -huh. Yeah, if, if uPortal doesn't do something that you need, help us get it into the core product and we'll, you know, release a build. Uh, you should be aware. So all of you, uh, you know, with the exception of, uh, of the UCR folks on the phone, but all of you on the phone have a history with uPortal and have been trained, I guess, by the uPortal community, um, have been trained what to expect as far as releases, and, and, and what you've come to expect is not much. Uh, with uPortal, historically, we have cut very few, uh, we have tagged very few releases, a few a year at the most. Well, uh, if you look back to the early days of uPortal 4, there was about one a month. There was a period where there was about one a month. But uh, in normal times, previous to uPortal 5, uh, we would tag two or three a year at most. We would have a new major version only every few years. We would have a new, new um, 
minor version maybe every year or every year and a half, and every minor version would only have a couple, couple or three uh, patch releases. Uh, that will not fly in the uPortal 5 world. Uh, there will need to be a, a much bigger number of patch releases. Uh, it's completely impossible that there won't be. And that is because, in, con in contrast to uh, previous versions of uPortal, so with, with uPortal 4 and 3, previous to uPortal 5, we cut releases uh, as a marketing gimmick. Uh, that's maybe uh, a bit reductive. Uh, but the, the releases that we tagged in uPortal were primarily for vanity. They were to measure our progress. Uh, and in order to promote our progress. Uh, when we sent those releases to Maven Central, from there they went nowhere because no one could run a portal uh, based on binaries that came from Maven Central. Uh, that paradigm has been flipped on its head with uPortal 5. None of that is, is true any longer at all. Uh, a typical uPortal 5 uh, adopter will run the portal based on binaries that come from, from Maven Central. So if, if uPortal adopters are going to benefit from changes that we make to uPortal, those ch uh, uPortal will have to be released uh, to include those changes. So it's completely, completely different. Uh, how easy hard will it be for me to get my uPortal 4 custom skin onto uPortal 5? If it's a uPortal uh, 4.1 and above skin based on Responder, uh, the good news is, in this case, it actually will be relatively easy. Uh, I've, already, I've already done it once. Uh, well, not just me, but working with Oakland, uh, and Brandon Powell's on the call, uh, working with Oakland, we ported Oakland skin uh, from uPortal 4.3 uh, to uPortal 5 in, I want to say, a morning. Does that sound about right, Brandon? Uh, less than that. Yeah, it was really quick. Uh, that is, that, that's less of a feature of uPortal 5 so much as a happy accident. The, the changes in uPortal 5 are, are primarily around the things we talked about, uh, sort of redoing the way that uh, adopters work with the portal, the way you you know, the way you build and package and deploy the portal, the way you configure it. Uh, since the changes are there and not uh, so much in the skinning process, the skin you have will migrate to uPortal 5 extremely quickly. Uh, at Oakland, we are working on implementing uPortal uh, 5. So far, most of the work is fixing bad practices that we had from uPortal 3 and 4. Uh, well said. Uh, that's um, we all go through that, I feel like. Uh, Andrew Petro says releases are way more valuable in a world where your path to adopt them is, is to tickle, <laughs> tickle your uPortal start dependency declarations. Yes, and Andrew, it, he states exactly what I'm uh, going for. Your path to new stuff in uPortal is through Maven Central. So we have to send it to Maven Central. And in order to send it to Maven Central, we have to release it. You can expect, I'm, you know, I'm going to call it, uh, and we'll see how, how correct or incorrect I am, but I expect in the neighborhood of two releases, two patch releases a month of uPortal 5. So you can expect a lot of activity in that area. Uh, we will be talking, Bruce, could Aperio or OU publish a migration guide? Uh, I don't know. Uh, working on migration is, that's what we will be sort of focusing on to the, to whatever extent we can possibly um, get plugged into that work, we will be focusing on migrating folks to uPortal 5. Uh, you know, at, at OU as well as at Unicon. Uh, to whatever extent we get the opportunity to focus on that, we will be documenting what we learn, uh, expanding the documentation, not only on 
uh, how to configure and manage your U Portal 5, but how to get there from earlier versions. Uh, I, I can say our hearts are in the right place. Uh, it's difficult for me to, to say exactly where and when and to what extent uh, there will be documentation of, of that nature, but I hope that there will be. We are certainly agreeable to, to, um, you know, to working on that. Uh, upgrading changes to your local stuff should be measured in single digits of characters. I'm sure that's the case. Uh, and Brandon says once they get something up, they will send out to the mailing, mailing list. I'm going to encourage uh, Brand, the other Brandon, Brandon from UCR, uh, also to send out some of these uh, screen captures uh, and a note to the list. I think it's very valuable. I'm delighted to see so many of you here, but there are a lot of folks who aren't on this call who could benefit uh, from seeing what UCR was able to do. Uh, any more any more questions? Uh, I think that we can sit here and take them as long as we got them. I don't know what the next slide is, uh, Christian. Okay, uh, Stephen or Benito, you want to cover this part? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and wrap up the conversation here. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending. I also want to thank everyone for the hard work that they put into you portal over the past quarter. That includes all of our subscribers, in addition to the Unicon team. Um, without everyone's hard work, we wouldn't have made U-Portal 5 possible. Um, on that note, um, the slides should be up within the next couple of weeks. Um, we'll do some editing here, and we'll get them up on our public website at the address found here on the slide. And, um, you know, share it. Um, inform your other stakeholders that this is available. We encourage everyone to go back and take a look at the presentation. I think it's got some very informative information in regards to U Portal 5. And uh, we look forward to seeing everyone again for quarter four uh, briefing, which will take place mid to late January. Um, so if no one else has any further questions, we'll go ahead and call it a day. <laughs> Thanks, Christian. Thanks for listening. Thanks for everyone's input. And I uh, hope everyone has a great day. Don't forget to register for Dev Days at Madison. Uh, tremendous amounts of UPortal 5 information there. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.